Hello team, welcome back to the channel where this video, as the thumbnail says, is my heat pub is I'm basically sending a flare up for this video. Welcome to the channel. People who know me will see how the tones down, etc., from being such a, a bubbly person, but we built this home, me and Steph, we renovated it, extended it, and the idea, it is a carbon neutral home, it is. However, solar panels, heat pump, etc. Unfortunately, we've been let down with the heat pump. Uh, we've had it for a few years now, and it's been all right. It's worked perfectly. I've even done a video on the channel about how I did the different times, etc., with the running costs and things like that. And it, it worked perfectly, but, and I will show you clips of the problems of it in very second. I just need to put some context behind, behind it all. But unfortunately we have hit a brick wall and this is what I feel is the problem with the, this technology in this industry that we've got with the heat pumps is nobody nobody can basically know what to do from out without without the manufacturers really involved or or really really knowing that system etc because this heat pump goes into defrost mode all the time and it goes into defrost mode because it's frosted over it's frosted over because for some bizarre reason it can't run for more than 15 to 20 minutes without going into defrost. Now I've put on screen now some, literally some screenshots of it continually going up, down, up, down, etc. It's like the bloody stock market, but it's got an issue and I don't really know what to do about it to be honest with you. And this is why I'm seeing if other people in YouTube, in the community of, of this, of, of my followers and, and things who, who subscribed from the previous video about heat pumps know what to do because I've hit a bit of a, a rock and hard place with both the installer and the manufacturer. Now, I'll get onto both of those at the moment. I'm not bashing all of them to, to death at the moment, but let's roll the clip over what it does. And from that clip, you'll get a good idea of, not how serious it is, but what it effectively does. Perfect. Right on cue. And that's it done. It's decided it's had enough. Just cut off. And it'll just defrost itself normally. So you see from the video, we're not talking like a massively iced up unit. We're not talking like you see a horror shows of it completely getting covered in ice and the blade can't spin because of how much ice there is in there. It's just freezing up. It's just working so hard that it, it does its time, etc. Then it needs to the thaw out, etc. However, it does do what it does on the tin. The thawing out process from it go when it hits the ice or frosting over. And it's only a nice thin crisp frost it does on it then it shuts off to defrost it clears it it's absolutely fine like that, that that element of it works fine and it clears it all there's nothing left behind it is all done however like i said it goes into all the time so how did i come to this event so i published that video on the channel around about the different heat pumps running etc time versus 24 7 and in that video i mentioned i've got a little bit of a problem that problem really escalated in terms of it was happening extremely regularly. And at this point I'd switched to just having my heat pump run, running um, during the time periods of when it's cheap to run the heat pump. And because this house is so thermal efficient, I can get away with it. I, can, I only need to run this heat pump, even when it's really, really cold at like zero degrees, around about 37 flow. So I, I don't need to hammer it. However, my heat pump's pulley, six kilowatts an hour when it's just trying to do that. So it is mad, but it escalated quite a lot. So spoke to the um, installer who installed it a couple of years ago. Um, 
not that I don't have a great relationship with them. They have serviced the heat pump before, but I, I think they're crap. They've done a bit of some dodgy installation, if I'm honest with you and stuff, but they were MCS credited. However, the worrying side for me is now they're heat, heat geek certified, so I'm a bit bit worried about that and people will be like oh name and shame them i don't do that look at my previous videos on the channel i don't do that i'm not into that type of type of thing but the installer rang them spoke to them and their simple advice was give us access to it which i did and they came back with you just need to up the compensation curve so upped it surprise surprise no difference so that was a waste of time so then i spoke to mitsubishi Mitsubishi sent out an engineer for the first visit. Keyword there, the first visit, because there is more. When they sent the, um, the engineer out, it was a guy I know very well because he's since taken over and served in the heat pumps. And he looked at it and he couldn't really work out what was wrong. Did a series of little tests, you know, the gas, compressor, things like that. And then out of course, she just changed a couple of the sensors and went on his merry way to write a report. The report obviously said it keeps doing it, which it does. The difference is it was defrosting at seven, anything below plus seven, but now it was then doing it plus five. So we had a bit of progress. It, it did calm itself semi down. However, it did obviously fix it. So I had to ring up again saying, what's happening? You are caller number two in queue. Caller number two. Let's have it. Let's have it. I'm guessing this is them to cut me off. Call ended. Uh, I have recorded all the conversations. I might put a few at the end of this video. I might not. The reason is I had to sit through 25 to 30 minutes worth of video because I was on hold quite a lot and shit like that. So I might put them in. No bad language, no issue with the people, but they're, they're limited with their knowledge and what they can do and stuff like that. So ran up again yep okay we'll send the engineer out again the engineer turns up with no parts no information extra from the factory anything like that almost like well there's nothing for me to do so he literally we had a chat he looked at some data in front of me i showed him other data and he left after about two hours having a cup of coffee so that was that where well, i then had to ring up again where mixed said right this time we're gonna send out some big wigs Fair play, and they said two of them. Two big wigs turned up, um, field engineers, actually proper engineers. And those those two big wigs assessed it, took all the covers off, looked at loads of different stuff, like load, load, loads, and went away and wrote the report saying they believe it, it's going into this mode because um, the run from the heat pump to the plant room is 18 meters, and it says it's too big potential potential too big and there's not enough volume in the system so the recommendation what they came back was they're going to fit a volumizer free of charge fair play and they're also at the same time going to change the brains of the heat pump so fourth visit came along turn up the following week fitted the volumizer fitted the um, new brains etc uh, tapped it on its its head and off it went and Great, okay, you're thinking, let's fire it up, fired it up and stuff, and surprise, surprise, it was, and this is what's so annoying, the day they fitted that, it was relatively warm, so it didn't obviously freeze when they're there. The next day, when it's cold, three degrees in the morning, it fires up, and lo and behold, it, it, it's, it just can't work. But what makes it worse, it can't also be anywhere near the Delta T. It's massively, massively out. It's like eight um, eight degrees different from flow and return as before the volumizer went in it is uh it was five it was getting there it just fro froze all the time so that was the issue now i put on screen now the 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 the, the information regards in like the radiators that what i believe the sizes are in terms of how much water is in it i've also put on there the pipe size of what i think i've got so you get an idea of how much water's in that. And then again, I'll put in the manifold runs in terms of how much on the floor heating. So that is, that's accurate because I, I've got actual lengths and stuff of that. But it is, I'll, I'll just put up in that. And then obviously now I've got an 18 litre volumizer. So the problem I've got with it is it's not working and no one knows what to do. Uh, Mitsubishi 
um, were confused off the back of that. So then they turned up again for the fifth time and they turned up with loads of laptops. They plugged the laptops directly into the heat pump and did series of tests for like six hours. Testing it, testing it, testing it, obviously. Did all that stuff, did all that stuff. And the outcome of the factory is they, they're seeing issues, but they're now going to be working on behind the scenes now to see what is actually the issue. So I'm just stuck in the rock and hard place. I've had two and a bit months of a heat pump on its ass. Nobody has the knowledge to know what to do. The installer, Heat Geek certified, don't know or won't help, useless. I spoke to another company who um, said they don't specialize in Mitsubishi's. So I had to go down the MCS accreditation thing to see if I can get them to force the installer to come. So I'm kind of keeping that in my back pocket at the moment. I'm basically waiting to see if Mitsubishi come back in the next week with, with anything in particular. So, so it's mad. It's absolutely mad. And I just don't know what to do. I'm just, I'm just in an absolute rock and hard place. Everything here is brand new. It's, it's, it's not tagged on to anything at all. It is all brand new. Not only three walls survived in this house and nothing else survived. No wiring, no nothing. It's, it's all gone. So I need help reaching out to people. Hopefully some people know what to do. And yeah, that's it.